Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Now, this is sort of an unusual episode. I normally don't do two in one day, and this is the second one for Sunday, but it comes at special request. Brother Silence asks, could you please react to something by Children of Bodom or Synergy? The songwriter for these bands, Alex Laiho, just passed away last week at 41 years old, leaving a gaping hole in the hearts of the metal community. Alexi was one of metal's all-time great guitar players, and it's so sad that he's gone. So yes, Brother Silence, we will honor Alexi uh, by checking out some of his guitar work. Uh, we're going to do some Children of Bodom needled 24-7 at your request and uh, I guess we can focus on the guitar work a little bit and uh, see just have a little look at uh, some of the ways that Alexi has influenced the metal community and uh, added to it so yeah let's get into this one Children of Bodom needled 24-7 just getting right into this Lots of writing a pedal note. I love how that solo introduced the uh, the main melody right here. Yeah, lots of pedal note writing and uh, running into a, a little riff at the end of each repetition got a little bit of electronica in here yeah I love these little bits of melody in between all the uh, the pedal writing. Do they have a keyboardist? It's really interesting here in the contrast of like the singular sound on the pedal notes and the galloping and then like the harmonic aspects uh, aside from them going back and forth. I'm feeling it was very a beat for a second. interesting collection of nice harmonic and melodic ideas paired with extreme dissonance and just coloring way outside the lines. Yeah. 
that subtle little shift to triple it. Okay, so um, I saw somewhere that this song uh, came out in 2003. Yep, right there. Uh, so you can see it right there. 2003 uh, is the album that this came out on. Um, and, uh, it, it really puts a lot into perspective. Um, I don't know where this fits into the history of metal, but I would say that it definitely predates metalcore by a couple of years. And I also don't think that it is too... Uh, wild of a claim to say that this heavily influenced metalcore. Uh, some of the bigger metalcore bands uh, that I would think of would be stuff like Bullet For My Valentine and uh, early Avenged Sevenfold. Um, I don't know, like, uh, what was that? City of Evil, I think that one was, uh, with Beast and the Harlot on it. Um and I can hear a lot of influence of Children of Bodom in both of those works. And I would say that those are two of the, uh, you know, more prominent uh, bands that came about at the beginning of, of uh, Metalcore. I don't know. Have I been saying Metalcore? <laughs> That's what I mean to be saying. <laughs> um, yeah. And I don't think it's too far off to say that they uh, are definitely a major influence, maybe even started metalcore music um i think brian not brian a brother silence i'm brian um i think brother silence said uh yeah children of bodom is melodic death metal and that might be true as far as uh you know their overall sound maybe how they started maybe how they ended uh maybe the majority of their songs but this specific song to me feels like the beginning of the big surge of metalcore. Uh, and I don't mean, I know a lot of people like bash on metalcore. It's like the not cool genre of metal. Um, but it was very popular for a reason. I would say everything that's popular is usually popular because it's good in some way or another. Bad things do not become popular very often outside of, uh, you know, finding, uh, enjoyment and irony but um yeah i i think that having this being my only introduction to alexi's guitar work i don't think it would be too far of a stretch to say that he could be the grandfather of metalcore and i don't i hope nobody sees that as a sort of slight towards him like i said i know metalcore is kind of the butt of a joke in a lot of metal communities sadly uh, it's, it's kind of weird to see a, a community be, you know, communities are elitist, uh, about outsiders. That's, that's just normal, I think, especially when you get fringe communities. Uh, but it's always, I always find it weird when communities end up being elitist within their community. And I think that always kind of, I mean, elitism kind of sucks all the time, but, uh, yeah, it's, I always find it kind of weird that metalcore has its reputation even within metal communities. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's really interesting to hear this specific sound. Like I hear so much of, uh, you know, City of Evil, Avenged Sevenfold here, uh, especially in what I think is the coolest thing, the thing that really sticks out to me, what I enjoy, because I've mentioned a lot in the past that I am more of a melodic music fan. Uh, even as I've ventured into some of the, the harsher metals and some of the fringe uh, rock and metal stuff that we've checked out, uh, I tend to gravitate towards the more uh, harmonic stuff, the more melodic stuff, um, the more stuff that feels to me like more traditional music rather than some of the more rhythmic stuff out there. And metal does seem to have these two facets where we have the heavy rhythmic side, then we have the heavy melodic side. Uh, heavy rhythmic would be stuff like uh, Meshuggah, where it's like super 
about the rhythms and how, uh, you know, they're creating these rhythms with, uh, you know, polymeter and, you know, just extremely short uh, staccato notes and, and alternating note lengths and rest lengths. And then you have your more uh, melodic side, which would be stuff like uh, symphonic classical metal, symphonic metal, symphonic metal, whatever like Nightwish and Epico would be. I think that's symphonic metal. Um, and you kind of have these two two sides. And I really love hearing them come together, even though I typically do enjoy more melodic music. Uh, I do think that focusing on rhythmic elements is just another tool in the toolbox and any tool can be used effectively. Uh, sometimes tools get used in positions where I am not fond of them. Yes, <laughs> you can use the back end of a screwdriver to nail a hammer in. It works. <laughs> it's, but I don't think it's better than a hammer. I mean, to nail a nail in, but I don't think it's better than a hammer kind of thing. So you can use rhythmic elements throughout an entire song. And yes, it works. It's a song and there's going to be people who enjoy it. But I would rather have some melodic aspects in there. And I really love that about here. And it's probably why I came to enjoy stuff like Bullet for My Valentine when I was younger. Because they kind of marry these two elements. You have stuff like your gallops and your pedal notes that you that uh, these guys are sitting on. But then at the end of it, instead of just, uh, you know, galloping for the entire uh, verse, so to speak, uh, they'll gallop for three bars. And on the fourth bar, they'll throw in like a da 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 or some sort of little melodic aspect. And they'll harmonize. The two guitarists will do harmonies on it. Um, and I mentioned that I really found that to be interesting to have this singular idea of the rhythmic aspect. Your drummer, your bassist, your two guitarists. Uh, I think there was a keyboardist, but I only heard them during the keyboard solo, so I'm not actually sure uh, how often they pop. Oh, you know what? That electronica part was probably the keyboard. But when the whole band was in, I couldn't really hear the, the keyboardist, so I don't, I don't know where they fit in with this. But the drummer, the bass, the two guitarists, uh, they would do the gallops or the pedal notes. The pedal and you know the bass kicks would have the same rhythm, and everybody would be this single chugging machine, this single rhythmic machine. And then, uh, you know, bar four will come around and it's time to hit that melodic section and they, they break apart. You know, they do their individual parts um, and you get your harmonies and your bass is kind of doing whatever the bass is doing. Uh, honestly, I don't remember. Might have been a mix issue. Might have just been I wasn't paying attention to it issue. <laughs> um, but then they come back together and it reminds me of like that uh, that that star toy where it's like a ball and then you can stretch it out and it's like this 30 sided sphere. Uh, and then you can like shrink it back down into a, a ball or a star or something. Um, I probably described that <laughs> plastic toy horribly, but if you know what I'm talking about, I think you kind of get the analogy there. Um, but yeah, it's just really cool to hear like the singular idea and then the individuals doing their things coming back together into a singular you know machine a singular sound and then spreading out doing their ideas in this back and forth and i really love that um i don't know if alexi sort of popularized that i don't know if he got that from somebody else maybe he was influenced from a band who did that a lot um like i said i don't exactly have all of the context for this other than the fact that alexi was a guitarist who was massively uh, you know, adored in the metal community, and he unfortunately is not with us anymore. But given that this came out in 2003, that I do have that context. And, uh, you know, it could be in a way that he sort of popularized this idea or created this idea of marrying these two sides of metal into one and getting this melodic aspect and the rhythmic aspect together. And is, instead of combining them, um, simultaneously creating this back and forth as sort of call and response. And if so, then he definitely influenced an entire genre of metal. And that is just phenomenal. Like, it's crazy to me that I've listened to these bands that definitely took inspiration from at least this 
this idea that's present in this specific Children of Bodom song, but I've never listened to Children of Bodom before. It's really cool to kind of get that history and context to bands that I have listened to. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that wraps this one up. You guys can let me know what you thought about Children of Bodom's Needled 24-7. Um, if anybody has any stories about Alexi that they want to share, if you have any context for Children of Bodom or Alexi's guitar playing, maybe where he was inspired from, or if any bands have quoted that, you know, they've been inspired from, you know, Children of Bodom or Alex, uh, Alexi specifically, uh, anything, you know, just go ahead and put it down in, in the comment section. I will be reading every comment for sure. I always do, but I think it's uh, specifically important that I mention that for this video so yeah we wrap this one up uh usually i do all the sign off stuff i'm not going to worry about that because oh it just it seems so trivial so yeah you guys stay safe out there keep being awesome have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos rest in peace alexi Thank you.